do what all those other smart and talented ladies did. Okay. Oh. It's so suddenly overwhelming. Um, you I want to thank first. Um, uh, he was the most extraordinary partner to work alongside, and, and the only difficult thing about it was laying down my awe at being in a scene with him. Um, thank you for those words, for that heart, for that wit, for that talent, and for being by my side in our work and in our lives. Um, and I also wanted to thank him for the best piece of show business advice that I have likely ever received. Uh, our first day together on set, as I was standing around nervously in very high heels and a very uh, skin-tight gown that constricted my walking to a shuffle, which done at a high speed uh, had a wonderfully comic effect of a precarious wind-up toy, Ken approached me and said to me in his delicious accent, which I shouldn't dare to mimic, but will, darling, a little piece of advice for you. Why stand when you can sit? And why sit when you can lay down? Now, please, note the chaise lounge in the corner. Make yourself comfortable. Conserve your energy. It's going to be a very long day. Which brings me to quite possibly the worst piece of advice I've ever received. When I was first starting out as an actress, somebody suggested to me that I change my name to employ alliteration a la Marilyn Monroe. They suggested that rather than Michelle Williams, I go with Michelle Montana. Or... To add an international flair, Michelle Montagna. I always think I came this close to a career as a porn star. <laughs> I've been saved from fates such as these by instincts that I've come to trust and by a few people that I am lucky enough to know, one of whom is here tonight. Uh, my publicist, Mara Buxbaum, whose love has been unconditionally by my side since I was 18 years old. And on a show, she apologized for never having seen or heard of when she met me, Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Thanks. Um, when my credits didn't amount to much, she championed me. And when I needed it the most, she protected me. We've been through the best and through the worst, and it's with gratitude and optimism that I say we might be back at the best again. She took me shopping for my very first premiere dress, and when I wanted to wear it with my black Converse high-top sneakers, she encouraged me to do so. When I took time off or made strange, small, experimental art films, she told me that she was proud of me. She taught me how to use my voice because for the first time, someone was listening. In a world where sameness and safety has a monetary value, she always encouraged me to be myself, whatever form I took. I feel liberated to take risks in my work because of soft landings like these, to be embraced by friends and by a community, by this community as a whole. And my only wish is that Marilyn herself could have experienced in her lifetime what I am lucky enough to tonight, that despite her gifts as a performer, the likes of which we haven't seen since, Marilyn never got the recognition that she deserved. She was beholden to the confines of a studio system, limited in terms of her artistic expression, and when she did stretch beyond her pinup picture, she was pushed back into place. So I am lucky to be able to say thank you to the Palm Springs International Film Festival for this great honor. And I want to thank Harvey Weinstein for safely delivering this film and Marilyn's memory back into the world. And lastly, I want to thank my director, Simon Curtis, for entrusting me with her beautiful soul, her valiant struggle, and her eternal heart and I want you to know that I accept this award on both of our behalf. Thank you very much.